John Papa John. I'm a venture capitalist. I live in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, uh, approximately 25 years ago, I had an idea of cr creating entrepreneurial centers in the state in order to train college students to learn how to start and run a business. My name is David Hensley. I'm the executive director of the John Papa John Entrepreneurial Center here at the University of Iowa. I am Jimmy Dureska, and I am the director of the Institute for International Business here at the University of Iowa. Iowa JPEC is the hub for entrepreneurship ed education and outreach at the University of Iowa. So I'll start with the educational program. Before JPEC was created, there, might, there was a couple of classes uh, at the University of Iowa, but they were primarily for MBA students. With the creation of the center, we've grown to one of the largest, most comprehensive programs in the country. We have a major in the business college. We have a major in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which is about four or five years old and has been one of the fastest growing majors on the campus, as well as one of the largest majors now on the campus of the University of Iowa. We have multiple certificates, which are kind of like minors. They give students from different backgrounds. We've got especially one in engineering. We have a specialty one in media and journalism. We have one in the arts, and then we have an over, overarching general certificate in entrepreneurship at the undergraduate level. Our program is really focused on application of theory, and so it's really a hands-on experiential learning-based program where we want students to learn theory but then practice it in every class that they take. So they're heavily in, involved in a constant uh, effort to identify and evaluate opportunities to be able to put strategic plans together. Uh, we teach them the latest tools, business model canvas, lean, lean startup methodology, put them working with companies uh, here in Iowa as well in Africa through the Institute for International Business and the Mandela Washington Fellows Program. So it's, it's very, very, you know, broad, deep, but at the same time, um, uh, again, it's the chance to, to, to practice entrepreneurship while they're here, not just read about it or think about it. Venture School was, was an eye-opener. It created new opportunities for me, uh, but above all, it created a new sort of knowledge in terms of how the market operates, in terms of how business operates. Went through the Venture School in Iowa, powered by John Papa John in the John Papa John Center. When I came back, I was able to redo customer discovery on my company, and I discovered there's so many gaps that were missing. First, we were only in Cameroon, but after Iowa, we are now in Nigeria, and it's, it's now easier for us to move into other parts of the continent of Africa. So I've been here mainly working with the student entrepreneurs, but also working with the entrepreneurs around the state. Swine Tech is an animal health company dedicated to reducing pig deaths and inefficient, inefficient processes on pig farms all over the world. I am also the director of the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program. The fellowship was really nice. It was an inspiration and uh, and uh, something that really changes my life. What um, the Mandela Washington Fellowship did for me is it opened up my eyes to just how large and, and how um, diverse Africa is. All of our entrepreneurship programs and our international entrepreneurship engagement programs are done via the John Papa John Entrepreneurial Center here at uh, the University of Iowa. I think one of the biggest lessons that I learned from Papa John uh, is actually his life story. The fact that he migrated from, uh, he migrated into the USA and, and, and he was a complete stranger in a new territory but he was still able to thrive. And one of the, his key message was that if I can do it, so can you. I grew up in the next five years should be existing in at least five African countries. Currently we exist in two African countries and we provide processing services for farmers, we provide uh, greenhouse services and we also do uh, uh, vegetable farming, uh, we also process for cassava into high quality cassava flour. A few years ago, uh, I was approached about um, the Institute for International Business. It was kind of, it was there, but it, it was kind of looking for, there had been some leadership transition, kind of looking for a new purpose, and I really had the interest in how do we provide more international entrepreneurship opportunities for students here at the University of Iowa and how can we take some of our expertise in entrepreneur education in particular and help people from other countries uh, and 
So Demi Duresca, we brought Demi in to run the IIB. He got the Mandela uh, Fellows Program here. And it really started opening doors for us, for our students to engage in international business opportunities and entrepreneurship. So through the, the Fellows Program, we have, we have our students that will work in teams and be doing consulting for uh, African entrepreneurs when they're home. So uh, one of the unfortunate things about that program is it's a summer program and most of our students are off campus. So uh, we missed some opportunity there. We're trying to figure out ways to get more summer students to, to be here. But you know, it's summer time, most of the students are off campus doing internships and working. So, but, so we thought, well, we still want to be able to do that. So we were able to take our infrastructure with our consulting class and take our students that are being trained on business strategy, entrepreneurship, etc., and then have them utilize by using Zoom and other technologies can be providing consulting and business support services to uh, the Mandela Fellows and all across Africa where we have um, our alumni. It's an incredible experience for our student base. Let me start with the first question. So, so how has the experience been so far for you working with your company? First, uh, what company you working? Uh, or and how has the experience been for you so far? Yeah, so I'm working with Sandra at Asali Mawoyo uh, Honey Company, um, and so far it's been great, and I would say it's been extremely rewarding. I think that the interpersonal part of it is uh, super important, and I've learned that in other places like Uganda, it's much more valued, and it's not just business. And I think it is super important to get to know the individual, have that conversation before you dive into business. So it's not just solely your meeting and just doing projects. It's, you know why you're doing it and you know why it's gonna help this person out. And I think that's been incredible. Hi, my name is Luke Lopez. I'm gonna be a senior major in entrepreneurial management and pursuing an international business certificate. Uh, the experience has been great. Uh, I think one of the coolest things is that I met the company I'm working for, uh, Yonatan Bikel, last summer actually. Um, so just kind of connecting with someone that I've already met, um, it's been twice as rewarding. Um, but it's been a lot of hands-on work. I think uh, every day that I've been helping him, uh, it's kind of contributing him to his next step of his business. Um, and I would say, honestly, it's a lot more rewarding than a typical internship work, just because um, they don't have quite as many means as we do in America. Um, so I, you know, every minute that I'm contributing, I feel like I'm doing it like tenfold um, what I would be doing at an American company. Um, so it's been great. I've been doing a lot of hands-on work, like I said, doing some social media work, uh, doing some graphic design work to help the like social media pages uh, make it look more appealing to younger people, um, just different gra de demographics. My mother never went to, she went to fourth grade. She never had an education, but she was very smart. And she says, she, and she had a philosophy. She said, the more you give, the more you get back. And that was her philosophy of life. And it was a good one. And as a result, I've always wanted to be a philanthropist. And I've given, a, my wife and I have given a hundred million dollars away so far. And that's quite a bit of money. And they will give more, God willing, God willing, if I live long enough. A program like ours, we are really challenged um, by John and Mary Papa John to educate as many people as possible about entrepreneurship. So teach the entrepreneurial mindset, help them become more innovative and creative, how to, how to identify and seize upon opportunities, whether they're working for their own business, or if they're working for a large organization or a nonprofit. I would say at University of Iowa, I learned so many transferable skills uh, that can be, I uh, know, uh, tried and uprooted to our own communities in, in Zimbabwe. Um, the impact, you know, I, you know, right now I can't even explain. Um, I felt that the time was short <laughs> at first, and um, it was so intense because it was um, something that I've never experienced before. We take them through a process based on the business model canvas in Venture School. Seven weeks worth of hard work where they learn side by side with entrepreneurial instructors and um, entrepreneurial investors and so forth to test face to face through customer discovery if their idea actually resonates with the need or the problem of some specific target customer. The wonderful thing about it is that I have statistics that we've, we've started thousands of businesses, we've trained uh, 
thousands, uh, hired thousands of employees, and we have changed the ecosystem to the extent that young people now know that when they go to college and graduate, there is an option to get getting a job in some company. They can start their own business. So at 90 years old, um, John Papa John was addressing this crowd. He was not using a, a, a walking stick. So clear in thought, so clear in articulation. He goes on to say, I'm working on three projects, and one of them is an artificial intelligence where we are trying to find ways to reduce accidents in the workplace. He's 90 years old and he's working on three projects in technology. It's like your, your Sekuru, your grandpa. It's like my grand... Thank you. In less than an hour, <laughs> give me two projects. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> I mean, you're like, what is happening? This guy has made all the billions. He has made all the money that he needs. He should be in Honolulu or he should be in Hawaii resting and relaxing. He says, you know what? I work seven days a week. I carry my own briefcase. This is a man who started with about 2,000 US dollars. The first project that he did, he says he had about 2,000 dollars. He grew it to about 50 million, if I'm not mistaken. He's a venture capitalist who has possibly managed over 50 IPOs. He's 90 years old. He is gunning for more. I learned a lot, actually a lot. One of the things I learned was um, the importance of um, presence, of having a presence. So now I have a website. You're going for a program which is in the US. But then when you come back, you find it's relatable to solving challenges in your country. So it's something that every Zimbabwean, African, globally, they should go through. It's something that should be a global program. Now we even have some local Iowans, folks from Iowa City or City Rapids area, that are going to Africa doing reciprocal exchanges with the fellows. John Papa John talks about positive mental attitude. He calls it PMA. Coming into a bush like this needs a positive mental attitude. Coming back to Zimbabwe and rebuilding needs a positive mental attitude. I think that's one of the take home uh, uh, items that he touched on that I'll never forget about positive mental attitude. One thing stood very clear from his presentation, or one thing that I really took to heart is PMA, a positive mental attitude. Something I learned from him was just his humility and his ability to just com communicate with the with ordinary people. And um, something that I'm learning is that a lot of the times our problems, um, by seeing people around you as a key resource, you can actually find solutions. So that's something I learned about just his conduct, the way he spoke to us, the way he asked questions. He wanted to learn, so it's important to continuously be learning and hearing people's stories as well. So that's something that I'm also learning, to hear even from the people who, who, who we work with, the staff, what they think are the solutions and being able to value that. So I think that's absolutely something I learned from John Very Papa good. John. I think anyone who's spoken um, or had um, the, the privilege to hear him speak will tell you about one of the biggest takeaways would be the PMA, positive mental attitude. And um, to see that he not only speaks it, but he lives it and he breathes it because you can see that he's a man who's content in, in his being. And, and for someone who's achieved so much to still have the humility that he's got, I was blown away because sometimes you think when the money comes, you are, you're going to lose touch of the humanity, but he's still got it. He's got the millions, but he's still in touch with his humanity and he's still very much grounded and, and that that impressed me. I, I went to the US and I was like you know what I'm going to meet investors people want to invest and so when I met uh, John Papa John I was like you know what oh, we've got this idea can't you come and invest in Zimbabwe you know you're a billionaire and one of the responses that he told me and uh, which still rings a bell was you know what, there are other billionaires, you know, just like me. <laughs> and um, you need to go back to your country and see how you can also impact your country. He's, he told me that he came from Greece and he was sharing how um, he, he was also an immigrant and how he has, you know, uh, impacted um, the uh, trajectory in terms of access to education in the US. and. When I came back, I was just like, you know what, if John Papa John can do it, uh, coming from another country, uh, why can't I do it, having been born and bred in Zimbabwe? I haven't even moved residents. We have started 
7,000 new businesses in 25 years in the state of Iowa. Again, I've been with the JPEG since the start. I, 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 it's, I've been doing this for, for with, to, with John and Mary since 96 or 97 when I started it in Mason City. And uh, it's just been an amazing experience. We've helped people change their lives. And I think that, you know, about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship education, that's what that's about. It's what are you passionate about? And how can you create an economic opportunity that lets you pursue your passion, uh, create wealth, create job opportunities, create the kind of life you want uh, for you and your family and your, and your communities. And, and so I see entrepreneurship as probably the most important economic development strategy. I don't care where you are, right? Uh, because it, it is, it, it's based on innovation, it's based on creativity, it's based on energy and taking risks. Uh, and it just creates a vibrancy and, and you can see that when you go to different parts of the world those places that are based on innovation and, and entrepreneurship they have a different energy they have a different vibe they have a stronger economy and and because of John and Mary's vision entrepreneurship in the state of Iowa now is is not an afterthought it's the thought it's the focal point realizing we can't just do smokestack chasing. We just can't try to brag, pull some company and incentivize them to come here. We have to build a long-term sustainable economy and you do that through entrepreneurship. Uh, and so it, it's been an incredibly rewarding experience. Um, I think that it's one of the things that sets the state of Iowa apart from anywhere else. We were a flyover state for a long, long time. But I think as a, as a result of the creation of the John Papa John Entrepreneurial Centers, now we're getting calls from venture firms all across the country. What's going on in Iowa? We'd love to come to Iowa and see what you're doing. So again, this is, this is the, we are on the forefront of this and I think Iowa is uniquely positioned because of the Entrepreneurial Centers and because we're such good people. Uh, and we care, and we've been able to build relationships with our colleagues in Africa. I, again, I think there's tremendous upside potential and opportunities for further collaboration for the, for the benefits of all of us, and we, are, we at the University of Iowa are committed to making that happen because we think it's so fundamental to what we do, our students, and our state, and our community, and the world. Mm -hmm.